morning, everybody, and welcome to the Committee of the Whole Council meeting with City's Town Council, Monday, July the 7th, 0900 Council Chambers. First item would be the agenda and the introduction of any late items. Uh, is there any, any changes to the agenda that will be adopted by consensus? Uh, no delegations at this meeting. Um, so rolling into D business one, um, this is a resolution for the UBCM concerning National Park and the South Okanagan Smilkameen. Uh, Mr. Romanko, please, on a report. Thank you, Mayor Wells. Uh, yes, uh, as noted in my report, uh, Council has uh, addressed the issue of the National Park uh, on April 2nd, uh, 2012, uh, whereas they, uh, they passed a motion to uh, encourage the uh, the parties to get back uh, to the table to initiate discussions on this matter uh, that uh, and this uh, this is kind of a follow-up to that uh, to that particular uh, uh, action uh, there's uh, a request uh, that's been come forward uh, asking uh, the town of Asuyas to carry uh, uh, the attached motion uh, to UBCM uh, for consideration and uh, my understanding is that from discussions with UBCM uh, they are willing to accept this late motion uh, into the uh, in, in, into the books so uh, initially the uh, the request came for a motion of from the town of Asuyas to make a motion that we have done previously so uh, I, I don't know how council wants to address that with the authors of the of the request but uh, the attached motion is quite lengthy. Uh, one of the things uh, that I did note relative to the motion, and I had discussions with the mayor, is that the, uh, the motion is very much focused on the economic benefit of the park and doesn't really speak to the natural protection element. And uh, certainly I think that uh, uh, given all the, uh, the impacts of national parks, uh, economic benefit is one one benefit but uh, they're really set up to uh, to protect and preserve and that element of, of that yeah. of the uh, uh, the rationale for national parks I think needs to be in included here someplace okay thank you um, so this has a time frame uh, it's already overdue the June 30th was the date for UBCM resolutions um, Chloe had talked to, to uh, administrators at UBCM. This is Chloe McLaughlin. Um, she's uh, CPAWS, Canadian Parks and Wilderness Society. Um, and they are federal and they have employees and, and uh, all, all of that nature. So, so they've talked to UBCM and I just, uh, sorry on my computer wasn't working at home. Um, so. I've just sent you an email now that both has the, has the resolution and uh, this reply from RICO at UBCM, they're holding space for this resolution till today. So if we can make that change and, and of interest, um, I did a, a, a day in, same, same day in, same day out, flight to Vancouver and met with uh, Minister of the Environment, uh, uh, Mary uh, Polak and we had a one-hour meeting with them uh, comprising of uh, Chamber of Commerce, um, Jim Wise from the Burrowing Owl, uh, myself, Glenn Manziak from TOTA. There was five of us met with the minister and um, three, three, two assistants there and three assistants on, uh, on a video, video control. So um, we, we had this discussion and that same question came out the same, that, that we didn't really have the environment there. But Jim Wise spoke to it uh, very strongly. So um, maybe we could uh, just uh, do a, a, a bit of a shift on this. But if we are gonna go forward with it, it should be of the understanding that we would email it away today. Um, I don't know how that time frame. but we, we might get one more day, Mr. Romanko. There may be, maybe, maybe on the 8th, but um, so if we were looking at that environmental change. Now, the interesting thing is it's never really, it hasn't hit UBCM yet. So where did our, where did our resolution go when we did make that resolution? 
Was that just sort of a general resolution? That was a general support, statement. A uh, general statement. General statement, and, and again, we weren't noted in the uh, uh, in in the uh, the resolution as uh, as uh, as passing a motion. Okay. But uh, certainly, uh, I don't recall the exact s situation, but uh, it, it council wanted to make a statement relative to to moving the process ahead. And, and that's where the direction was. Okay. And uh, just to, uh, so this, this item is on the agenda for this afternoon okay. uh, for a formal motion from council to move this to UBCM. Okay. Uh, right now, it's a matter of do we need any in more information that we can Certainly. feed into this and then we'll, you know, depending on how it uh, comes out of the, how long the meeting last today, we can probably have it forwarded. Okay. Uh, to UBCM. <clears throat> uh, I'm sure if we had, the, I'm sure there would be the one one day leeway on that. So I, I, I guess the question is uh, checking the resolve of council because that was that was a period of time ago. And if we are going to bring this forward and go to the U, UBCM with it, then I think it's uh, check the pulse, check the pulse time, councillors, councillor Rhodes. Uh, well, I uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I really like this. I'm glad it's going to UBCM because it's uh, one of the, the stepping stones to uh, move forward with this. Uh, you know, I totally support uh, the national parks. Um, uh, you know, Canada's national parks as a whole are admired by everyone in the world that ever comes here. And as a matter of fact, a high percentage of our tourism is drawn to Canada because of our national parks. And, you know, I know there's a lot of... Um, strong cases against it. Uh, I just have total misunderstanding of any of those representations at all. As a matter of fact, I think that any of the concerns that have been brought up um, are made better by having a national park and that type of thing. So I totally support this and uh, looking forward to that resolution passing this afternoon. And uh, I have to say, almost without change, I can't think of anything else that needs to be added to it. Okay. Councilman Bardock. Yes, thank you. Um, I'm just looking at the at the resolution that was sent to us, and I'm wondering if it contains everything that we that we want because the whereases do not really they they talk about the uh, the importance of the economy and that the governing bodies of um, uh, have all okayed it, and it doesn't say much about the. Um, uh, the the you know the benefits that you were just talking about the the uh, um, uh, ecological benefits ecological yes yeah, yeah, sorry that's what I was thinking about it says it in the first part it has a little bit but I'm wondering if we need to add something in there I don't know but it's just a, a thought um, when I was at when I was at the meeting I did bring up some of that information um, that. The, the area that they're, that they're, that is being proposed uh, contains the most red listed and blue listed species both in both in Canada and in British Columbia uh, so there's there's a it's it's, it's like 30 uh, 30 red listed mm -hmm. species that species at risk there that are involved in that so I did bring that up at the at the at the meeting and of interest was this did move forward um, into a second meeting so so from from having sort of a no we're not dealing with it response now it's at the level where um, we have another meeting date set mm. so that's that's that, that was very very promising and uh, Mel Woolley was there from um, he's an Albertan with a company called land strategies that does a ton of work for the CS Indian band and the Penticton Indian band so Mel, Mel was at the meeting um, representing both because both of the chiefs just couldn't, just couldn't make it. Uh, so he was representing uh, both bands and very much in favor of, of this going ahead. So um, there, there was the environmental uh, issues and ecological issues discussed, but they're not in the resolution. And I think, I think that would really be positive if we could get that in as Councilor McCordoff had suggested. Councillor Ryan. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I, I certainly favor uh, continuing the, the momentum that ha has been going here from meetings and from the one you just attended. Um, 
And, uh, you know, my, my suggestion would be in the fourth paragraph, it says the benefits of the proposed national park uh, include, and I think we could easily slip in okay. a couple of things there in that paragraph sure. uh, to, to um, you know, to, to cover what we're just discussing. Uh, ecological benefits uh, and the, uh, the the preservation of this uh, as a, a unique uh, uh, landform in right, our country. Right. The only, you know, uh, while we're putting something in, that stimulus for land development, uh, that, that just jumped out at me and I don't know what that means, but I, I would favor just dropping that okay. <laughs> and uh, inserting a couple more relevant ones. Okay. It sounds a little too ominous. <laughs> Mr. Emanuel. Uh Yeah, I guess my, my suggestion is that there would be a, a whereas clause that addresses econo uh, okay. the e ecological because sure. okay. uh, the whereas clauses are supposed to be statement of undis undisputable fact. Okay. And and so uh, if you highlight it within the whereas clause, it, it, it brings out. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't know how much of the of the uh, the yeah the summary is good, it should be you know. How much UBCM will want to use? Not uh, much. Not much. No. But the whereas clauses are, are the ones that are really speak to the uh, to the to the motion. Right. Yes. Right. That's good. Point. Yeah. So yeah, I think the, that that recital component there is way they're not gonna they'll hopefully draft and craft and snip and clip and get that into uh, into a shorter format. Uh, anything further? Come, come well, right, just, please. just uh, you know, I think that Mr. Romenko's point is a very good one because at the at the meetings, the only thing that's read is the whereas clause. Right, that's right. all that mm -hmm. you, people hear. You know, okay, and the rest is print form in the. It's in the book, in but it's the tome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anything further? So what we're hearing is that, that we'll go ahead and and make this active uh, at the regular meeting today. Yes, I, I, and I don't know that we have word copy of this. Uh, if we had time before, I could maybe bring back something for the meeting this afternoon, but I don't know what our time frame is right, going to be like. Right, right. Well, we'll <laughs> I, I, you know, and, and maybe there might even be uh, an opportunity to update it, of, you know, with this, with this RICO, um, I, if that's his, if I'm pronouncing that name right, but, but it, maybe we can have contact with him and... Okay, so we're moving into the regular meeting with this item. Okay, item number two. Uh, uh, a timber wolf as a restricted dog, a report from Director of Corporate Services, Ms. Van Vienen, please. Thank you. The attached letter to this report was received from Marcel and Jana St. Louis requesting changes to identify the timber wolf as a restricted dog in Osseus. Currently, licensing and control of dogs bylaw number 1036-1997 only identifies pit bulls and variations of that breed as a restricted dog in Osseus. A restricted dog means that when a dog is off its own property, it must be leashed and muzzled at all times, and when it is on its own property, it must be either indoors or in an enclosure outdoors. Council has already given direction to staff to review the dog licensing bylaw, and this request from the St. Louis can be addressed at that time. Or alternatively, Council can give staff direction to immediately amend bylaw number 1036 to identify the timber wolf as a restricted dog. The options being presented are one, that staff be directed to prepare a bylaw amendment to licensing and control of dog bylaw 1036 1997 to identify the timber wolf as a restricted dog, or two, that staff be directed to consider identifying the timber wolf as a restricted dog at the same time the animal control bylaw is reviewed and rewritten and that a bylaw amendment not proceed at this time. Staff is recommending option number two, as accurate information is not easily obtainable through the internet, a search on timber wolves gives conflicting information on the breed. Further research would be necessary in order for, to provide council with adequate and accurate information on timber wolves before proceeding with the bylaw amendment. Thank you very much. Uh, council input. Councillor McCord off roads, please. Thank you. Um, I would uh, I would certainly agree with statement number two. I think that if we are if we're going through um, the animal control bylaw and uh, that we should be looking at this at the same time, there could be other breeds that might be considered. I'm not sure, but pit bulls um, and combinations of that may not be the only ones. So I'm hoping that. Uh, that when the control bylaw is reviewed that they would look at other other types of dogs at the same time. Thank you. Councillor Rhodes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was going to say pretty much the same thing. Uh, 
Uh, man, we spent a lot of time on dog uh, matters. Um, I uh, am a little bit confused about the timber wolf uh, aspect of it. I, my vision of it is, is the whole herd of them tracking down moose, and so th <laughs> these these timber wolves can be domesticated. Is that what we're talking about, or are they wild timber? They're okay. Yeah, apparently they can be domesticated, but um, there's a difference between a, a purebred timber wolf and a mixed breed timber wolf, which that's where the conflicting information is. So I want to contact some conservation officers and mm -hmm. find out exactly yeah. what yeah. it is would be restricted and, and the more aggressive type of dog, I guess, or wolf. Yeah. It's uh, interesting. Uh, if you um, uh, go on the American Kennel uh, Club Society webpage, uh, the dog that uh, has the most negative human impact for bites and uh, and injuring uh, uh, humans of all kinds is actually a cocker spaniel, and uh, we, we spend all these times on on uh, different kinds of uh, uh, what we perceive as being dangerous dogs, uh, when actually a lot of the ones that are you know have the most negative impact are often forgotten about and that kind of thing and. Yeah, I'd be really interested to find out more about this. Uh, I was not aware that you could they could be domesticated. Uh, that would be very interesting to hear about that before we went forward with it. Yeah, from what from what I read, it was when they're brought into the home as a pup. That's that's when they can be domesticated, and I wasn't able to find out once they're older than that what kind of domestication can take place. So that's something we have to provide for in the bylaw, I think, as well as a definition. Just backing up, and first off, uh, Councillor Rhodes' statement, yeah, we're almost spending more time on dogs than we are on the folks that live here, uh, <laughs> particularly this time of year with parks and everything else and visitors and tourists. So our, right now, our bylaw, uh, which is for pit bulls, um, so that's a restricted dog, and the dog is uh, off its own property. It must be leashed and muzzled. Well, I don't, I don't see that happening. Uh, maybe, hopefully leashed. I don't think I've seen a muzzled dog ever here. We are currently now enforcing that. Everybody is getting one warning. Letters are going out to the owners to remind them that they must be muzzled. And by law enforcement is actively enforcing that. So in the last uh, few weeks. Okay, okay, okay. But All they're right. getting at least one warning first, so well, that as a reminder. So, that, so they so they should. Uh, mm -hmm. If we haven't been if we haven't been enacting it when it's on its own property, it must be or in a closed outdoors. Okay, thank you. Any any further comments on uh, Councillor Ryan? Well, I know that they're they're saying that you know this is an imminent situation, but I do think that um, it does require some. Uh, some uh, considerable thought, and um, obviously we've obviously got a, two two um, uh, people who are very knowledgeable who've been identified in the letter that I'm sure can provide some very helpful information. So um, um, I, I think it is it is important to, uh, to, to if we're going to make this change that we we um, look to see if there are other other types of animals that should be. Identified as well as uh, as the one that we have, and the and this one that's being proposed. Okay. So uh, we're. I would take it that staff is in favor of, of because this is a non-resolution meeting, non-voting meeting. That the direction Ms. Van Vienna would be to move forward on on that uh, on option two. Um, and you know, I hate to see this coming up. Once a year, we get a new animal breed. One of. Is there any anything that we can make that bigger? Uh, you know, is there is there anything out there we can check with other communities so we don't have to every time there's a new new dog breed out there or new you know we have to keep doing the the bylaw? Can we make it at the uh, at the discretion of the CAO? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> is, is there something we can do along that line rather than get? breed specific every yeah we can address that in the new bylaw when when we draft that up we can look at what options we can put in there for council delegating that authority to the CAO for sure okay okay thank you 
Okay, going to uh, business three, uh, directional signage, uh, verbal report from? Well, I was asked to put this on the agenda okay. by Councillor uh, Rhodes, so I, I, I passed the, the mic to Councillor Rhodes. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, when we were uh, uh, working on our uh, sign uh, bylaws as a, as a whole, um, one of the situations that came up was what we refer to as directional signage, and that would be to encourage people to turn left or turn right off of a thoroughfare and identify uh, locations uh, uh, that are off-road and that kind of thing. And there's a pretty strong uh, feeling that um, uh, these types of signage are a necessity. I think our sign bylaw uh, supports that. Uh, we did move forward uh, uh, having some conversation with Mr. Romanko about it. Uh, Phil Armstrong had begun some work in identifying some of the types of signage that might be suitable for our community. Uh, regrettably, with uh, changes and cutbacks in our planning department. This was one of the things that was reduced in priority. Uh, I believe it's still on our business plan, but it certainly has been not identified as any kind of a, a priority. And my intention today was to, you know, go over and pitch and look for support of this particular uh, part of our sign bylaw. But I don't really think that's necessary. I think the support is there. We agreed and put it into our, our bylaw. So I think I'd like to put some energy into trying to convince um, my fellow councillors that maybe we should move this forward a little bit and try to identify it as uh, a bit more of a priority. And having said that, um, I have to... Uh, be very candid with everybody. There's a pretty strong lobby out there. I'm not sure whether anybody else has heard uh, from any of the folks, particularly along Lakeshore Drive. Uh, there would be three developers along there, or three operators of resorts along there that are very uh, keen on, on moving forward with this. Uh, uh, the whole situation in the last week or so started off very combatively, I think. Uh, um, because some signage was removed uh, following everything that's in our bylaw there was nothing inappropriate done but I think we've got that settled down into a point where some logic and common sense is being applied to it and you know I've always felt that it was important for two reasons not only does it identify off main artery businesses for the people that are there it also improves an awful lot of the clutter that we experience um, and those ugly signs of which we have a few of them still hanging around and you know nice and I think I sent out a few um, photos of you know the way they could be and then one that looks like the worst case scenario that kind of thing and and I just uh, uh, I'd like to see us move this forward if possible and uh, perhaps, you know, maybe begin some work in earnest again on this. And uh, uh, so thanks a lot. That's why I wanted it on the agenda. And hopefully we can have some discussion about it. Thank you. Yeah, I can certainly uh, s support that. And we, you know, we're looking at this sign issue up and down the whole valley. And it's getting, uh, it's certainly uh, getting a lot of action in the Oliver area again. Um, but when you drive from so used to Oliver now, uh, just just by the people along there paying attention and getting those what I call the pallet signs out there where the, the old f broken down fruit pallet is sitting there with some sort of special deal of the day on and they're right on the, the right on the shoulder of the road and just by talking about it the people have cleaned up that stretch immensely I drive down it now I don't see too many signs that are offensive and there's some oversized ones and and you know, when we start when we start trying to correct this, it really gets into some problems. And I happened to uh, stop in at a fruit stand at the top of Graveyard Hill, and it, I think it's I think it's called Peach Hill Fruit Stand. It's on the inside corner, kind of a tight one to get in. 
And so the, the operator there comes out and he, the highways is coming down to take down. It's a large sign, but it's very, very well done. He's got flowers around it and everything. And you can see underneath it on a, for, for visuals because it, the sign doesn't start. I think our, the max size is 10 feet. And I don't think his starts till about eight feet. Um, but it's but it's there, it, uh, and so he's all concerned because the highways has served notice that they're going to start taking those kind of signs down. Um, it is people's livelihoods, and we have to put that into into the equation. Um, and certainly, we need we need signage, uh, wayfinding signage, um, and and how to how to get to businesses is so important. Uh, so. And if we can come up with uniform signs, then we're being proactive rather than reactive. And anytime government is being proactive, uh, that's a that's a winning uh, winning model. So if we can sort of get something, I know we we have that manpower situation when we when we downsized our planning department, and uh, you know you you start seeing some of the effects of those decisions, and this is one of them. But if we can get that in there and try to Try to move something forward where where we can have a, a common sign for multiple businesses going down that road, and they could be color coded or keyed. Or I'm sure there's a lot of uh, neat things happening out there in uh, tourist oriented communities. So. Mm -hmm. Councilor Bordoff. Thank you. I recall um, a year or so ago, uh, I think it was the Department of Highways that came down and talked to us about. Um, redoing the signage that uh, for campgrounds and and various uh, uh, amenities in the town and it, I think it's kind of fallen off the table I think it would be very good to have that discussion again or contact them and find out whether uh, they are proceeding with that we certainly saw some pictures when um, the gentleman was here about the overcrowding of signs and if you've got too many signs You've, you've lost your whole reason for having them because people are confused. So um, definitely in the town and on the highways, uh, I know it's a tough issue, but we, we certainly need to continue to deal with this because it, uh, it, it can be very distracting, unsafe, and, um, and ineffective. So we need to continue. Mr. Romanko? Yes. Uh uh, Council Rhodes is right. The uh, we do have it in our business plan. Uh, broader, there was there's two issues. One was the uh, discussion as a, as a result of the sign bylaw that uh, focused on on Lakeshore Drive corner, and uh, the businesses expressed need to move people that way. Uh, and and our our strategy was. Uh, uh, to try and develop something uh, along that corner to, to move people in that way. Uh, again, we, we meet issues there and, and the issues we would bring back to Council in terms of that directional signage is uh, what are the criteria that go on that particular sign? Uh, are there any fees associated with it? Uh, all those type, uh, you know, are they uh, you know, are businesses that are outside the town boundary allowed to be advertised on that sign? Uh, all those types of issues need to be identified. Uh, we we may be able to start working on this uh, later. You know, later in fall as a as a startup relative to uh, uh, you know implementation for next year. If I recall, there is some some uh, uh, a project of the resort municipality uh, uh, for directional signage as well. Because that was the second issue, is that we wanted to be, to create a better signage environment for the tourism community. So, looking to kind of marry a consistent look. Uh, uh, again, uh, just talking to other resort municipalities, I know of at least two that have done signage strategies. One is Golden, uh, you know, and I, I don't recall the other one. I think it was Fernie. But again, those were thirty thousand dollar studies, and I don't know that we need to do that. Uh, our sense is that if we can find the manpower to do it we probably can take their studies and take the principles uh, again it'll be probably a level of discussion that we'll need with the community about what look because not everybody's going to agree on 
what's the you know what is what is the nature of the of the look that we want for our community so uh, there probably will be a consultation component involved in that as well uh, even probably with destination associates specific to uh, the uh, the tourism component so uh, uh, from there all I can say about the enforcement is that uh, I think we're, we've we're, we're we're following the spirit of the law in other words we're not addressing all illegal right, signs right. Uh, it's it's uh, it's one where they're the ones that were over the top uh, they were on what I would call traffic areas and uh, placed the community in, in a position of liability and uh, you know I've been asking for them to be enforced for quite a while and uh, then it finally they were enforced so and uh, if, if there is some some potential hazard we've been dealing with it we have some businesses have even attached their directional signage onto our existing control signs which is illegal but we haven't addressed it because there's no it's not uh, it's not a hazard per se but uh, we, we do address them from a hazard perspective okay and I I guess I've seen some of the sandwich board signs out there and you know, for some new developments and something that's just sort of happening in the neighborhood, they are a way of people even understanding that there's a condo, you know, or a new building or something there. Um, yeah, I, I'm... Well, and, and, and that's a very good point because then we have to start talking about how does that development relate differently to the real estate market? Mm -hmm. And how do you rationalize mm -hmm. a larger sign for two or three houses for sale right. versus uh, the real estate industry that says, well, I got two houses on the block yeah, there. Right. <laughs> you know, maybe I need a, a larger sign. Yeah. So the, the you know, uh, the lodging, the lodging element, uh, you know, but when we start moving into developments, you know, residential developments and that, that's, that's an issue that needs, to, needs some discussion and, and clarification. Uh, and when we look at that, when you look at sign wars, and of course, uh, people in this room will soon be involved in sign wars, where <laughs> the the number of signs for for the uh, for the election in November, where the number of signs and the location of signs becomes uh, becomes a whole science uh, as to uh, as to moving moving forward into the into the political arena. So uh, you can see how things escalate with signs, and they just do. They, you know, when when so many people have signs, then then everybody has to have signs, and then we get into the bigger signs, and away we go off to the races. So, uh, <coughs> yeah, just if we can somehow show some leadership, um, that would I think that would be a target here, and, and hopefully we can keep this at, at some some level of, of uh, normalcy. Councillor Ryan. Yes, thank you. Uh, when uh, Councillor McCourtoff mentioned about the Ministry of, um, the, of uh, Highways, uh, you know, I remember that uh, it probably it was at least a year ago that uh, we had a, a meeting and they were talking about um, particularly entry into the community signage that would highlight, you know, half a dozen of mm -hmm. your, your mm -hmm. key, key um, uh, attractions and, and so on and we asked to be kind of a, a pilot in this area and uh, I think it would be good to, to get back to them it wouldn't it wouldn't deal with this specific uh, situation but it um, they might also be able to give us some uh, assistance in what we should consider doing uh, at the uh, at the intersection there of Highway 3 and Lakeshore Drive because presumably it would be <clears throat> you know, possibly on on highway right of way, and uh, you know I think they're they they they're, they're, they've got a whole sign uh, group that works on these things, and uh, I think they could give us some good information. Um, as Mr. Romanko points out, the the idea of residential developments versus tourist uh, services is is a uh, is kind of a uh, you know there, there's a there's a, a gulf between those two I think, uh, but. Um, but I think they could, there could be some helpfulness from, uh, uh, from uh, consultation with the uh, transportation people. Yeah, and, and just speaking to that, again, Phil was looking after that 
that con <coughs> the connection with with highways and then we went uh, we did ask uh, uh, destination associates for some feedback on what we should put on and nobody wanted to take the challenge <laughs> on so we can we can go back there and and I, if I recall I think there is uh, a highway sign that uh, notes uh, at Lakeshore Drive but again it's very generic it's lodging mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a water slide sign Maybe. Uh, I don't recall but I think there's a number of, of, uh, of, 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 of images there but they're very generic mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. councillor closing remarks councillor Rhodes uh, thank you again so um, <coughs> the purpose uh, of you know pitching this at this particular time was to try and move this into a higher priority than it is right now uh, I like the idea of collaborating with the highways department but uh, I don't think that's what this is all about I mean I like I, I love that idea I just think that we would clearly demonstrate some strong leadership if we were to do it on our own work at something that works at that intersection and then there are other areas in town that it will require this type of thing that we can use that you know that format you know at, at these other locations um, I know it sounds terribly critical but our highways department has clearly demonstrated to this council and the previous one uh, that things don't happen very fast if ever uh, you know I know they've been great with us but you know some of the projects that have happened have been years and years and years in the, in the making I just feel that there's a little bit more urgency with this particular one and another one of the great byproducts of doing this kind of thing is in areas like Cottonwood and Mesquite and those southern areas that have these these draconian sign bylaws that they have down there that you're lucky if you can put up a sign for anything even on your business building one of the good byproducts of these kind of ganging up uh, uh, directional wayfinding signage is that you eliminate all of those other crappy ones that are hanging around all the time and if we don't come up with a good plan we're never going to be able to stop all of that other stuff that we don't like and that's why I love the collaboration but that wasn't really the part of my pitch I want to move this up in priority and and uh, hopefully we can do that I guess uh, just an update on where we are uh, with bylaw. So we, at this point, we are collecting signs, or are not, or trying to be, trying to be a, a middle of road position, and well, it, which it is go, where you have. Yeah, to be. It, it goes back to liability, yeah. and 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 the signs that were picked up, uh, were on in in traffic areas. Okay. Uh, leaning up against the stop sign on Lakeshore Drive. Well, there's yeah. enough activity in Lakeshore Drive that, right. you know, and one was taken down, and a day later, another company put theirs up there. Okay. And uh, the uh, the others were, one was zip tied to a stop sign. Okay. Uh, okay. And uh, so those that's where there is potential liability on on traffic ways. Those those are being addressed. The rest are just you know the boulevard signs. You know, we're just we don't have the manpower to deal with it. Right. It's it's uh, but uh, if there is a potential uh, liability, then they're d addressed. Okay. Uh, so our direction again was well. From what I heard, you want to make it a higher priority. But I, I you know, the best I can do is that we can we can take a look, start taking a look at it maybe in fall. Uh, we'll see how our our uh, our projects that we're working on now how how they're. How they come to fruition but it will be again something I'll bring to council during our business planning discussions in August to see if there's any additional resources that council wants to put forward towards uh, uh, making uh, making it a, a a real priority so when we pick up signs that were deemed to be a traffic issue mm -hmm. Uh, they would go to public works and the, the ones now are in the planning department in the planning department okay. yeah okay. yeah with very specific instructions not to release until they talk to me oh okay so that I can address give, give the concern uh, that I had with them and uh, and uh, but uh, 
they haven't been well some have been picked up and okay. distributed okay. but I've had some discussions with people okay okay uh, ongoing <laughs> okay thank you uh, anything further I'll take that motion to adjourn councillor Ryan Plant all in favor or adjourned <laughs>